Um, so today's talk is going to be a bit of an introduction um, to SEO um, for developers. SEO is such a broad topic. Um, it was quite hard to sort of put put in elements um, for you guys to to under not understand, but to um, to talk about in such a sort of small space of time. Um, SEO always changes. Um, I think Google release al algorithm updates up to three times a day sometimes. So they, um, um, the world of SEO is always developing. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk about um, some important HTML elements. Obviously, as developers, coders, um, we place HTML tags all over the website um, to build the website. Um, but there are some specific um, HTML tags for, um, for SEO. Uh, we're going to talk about site speed, um, the importance of having a quick website um, rather than a slow one. I think Lewis at the start was talking about that. Uh, image, op uh, image optimization. Um, obviously, websites these days are really re visually appealing, but at the same time, um, they can be really slow. Um, and then we're going to talk a bit about schema.org, uh, which is the rich snippets um, that you can place and LD and stuff that you can place into the website and URLs so um, it's quite brief about URLs but it's quite important to, to understand like URL structures and things like that um, for the importance of SEO and finally we're going to be talking about mobile devices um, obviously um, I don't know if you guys know already but um, Google's index now is just mobile first um, so whatever you see on a mobile device is what's indexed um, by Google. And if you can't see it on a mobile, but you can see it on a desktop, nine times out of ten it won't be um, it won't be indexed for Google. Um, and you can always wonder why your website's not ranking well or it's not performing how the client wants. Cool. So, what is SEO? Um, Throw your answers into chat, sorry, um, and, and throw out ideas about what you think SEO is. Um, so <clears throat> isn't some of it at least about making your website uh, um, as best as it can be for the users, but also for like a, uh, you know, the Google web spider to to read it and parse it and um, stuff like that. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Uh, what, what have we got in the chat? Okay. So by that, I'm going to assume that not a lot of people know about what SEO actually means. <laughs> okay. So um, SEO is actually um, search engine optimization of getting traffic to your website for free, um, organically, editorial, or natural. Um, and that's from search results and search engine. So basically, you're going to be optimizing your website to be able to get free traffic because Google and Bing and, and, and all the search engines, you can pay um, to have um, traffic. But you don't really want to do that because nine times out of ten, that, that's not the best traffic to have. Um, you, you want to generate free traffic. Again, it's wins for the business because they're not spending any money. Um, and at the same time, you're able to sell your services um, with, a, with a low cost. Does that make sense? Yep. yep. Yeah? Cool. Okay, so there are three different types of SEO. Um, technical SEO. On page, uh, sorry, off page SEO and on page SEO. Um, so, um, technical SEO is, is probably the areas that we're going to talk about today um, in the sense that we're going to be looking at the actual markup of code uh, and, and sort of optimizations of code. Um, on page SEO is for your content um, and the content that you see on the website. Uh, and off page SEO is um, like your backlinks, uh, link profiles, um, uh, uh, and things like that. So um, the on-page stuff I will talk about. The off-page stuff, not so much, because it is a it is another minefield. Um, we could be here for another couple of hours if I talk about that. 
Um, but the bulk of it will be within the, the, the technical SEO ring. And on this little diagram, you can see that actually they all link together. Um, so they one helps the other and the other helps the other um, without one and if the chain breaks then you, you, your website won't perform very well okay so technical seo so uh, i do apologize about this slide because it is really wordy but um in general um technical seo is where most of you guys will be involved by adding specific metadata into the website um some specific schema into the website talking about site speed um and stuff like that and it's the actual process of sort of optimizing your website for the crawling and index stage um and this is probably the most important step out of all of it because actually we want the google bots and we want the bing bots to find your website they want to we want them to find the information on the website um and crawl it effectively um and the reason why it is called technical um, is because it has nothing, it, it's nothing to do with anything else, the SEO process. And the main idea of the technical SEO is to improve the infrastructure of the website, the speed, um, and, and all the reasons that I've, I've just spoke about. Okay, so we all know what it is now. So um, did I make sense about what I, what I said? Um, is it clear? Um, about what I yep. um, it, it's sort of like the icing of the cake really because you can dive deeper and deeper and deeper into SEO okay so um, important HTML elements so um, this is uh, my website it's a little um, photography website that I do I thought it's probably the best example that I have to show you um, and you've all gone to Google, you've all typed in things to search, like, I don't know, well, for here, pho photographs, for instance. Um, I typed in photographs by Stephen, um, and um, this is the search result. Um, at the top of that, you've got the URL that the website sits on, um, and then the blue text is your, um, your titles. So whenever you're creating a website, you always include the head, the header of the website, the, um, users can't see um, and that's where your title tag will go along with your meta description um, which is underneath um, there are um, as I go through we'll talk specifically about how we add that data in to be able to showcase um, onto Google search results um, and if the data is not there um, Google will make it up for you they'll take some random elements off your website um, and stick it in that place um, so ideally all websites that you're building you want to always make sure as a minimum that they have the title tag they have the meta description um because when someone's on google you want the the text to make sense cool so the title tag so um again as i said it's the most important tag really within within your website um it goes directly in the head um, and you've got most of you all have Google Chrome or some form of uh, browser with tabs and at the top you'll see um, mine at the moment just says meet and then random numbers um, that's that's the title tag um, for for your website so it's um, it's handy to see obviously where you I feel that you put code into a website and it's handy to see where it goes and, and what happens to that because as developers sometimes include like back-end developers mainly they can write loads of code but actually not realize where it, what happens to it in the future um, uh, the next tag would be uh, the meta tags so these are tags that again are read by robots um, and they're not seen um, as you see here, um, you have the meta tag. Uh, you call it. You have a name. Um, in this case, it's the description, and then you have some content. Um, so you'd also have like uh, meta name robots, um, and then content will be follow, um, comma index. Um, probably quite a lot of you have have been asked to put this in the title. Uh, uh, sorry, in the header of a website. Um, cool 
So it's a bit of a quiz actually now. Um, some of them are a bit of a tricked question, but all, I, all I'd like you to do is just say um, each meta tag is a, is a number. So uh, the, the first one, meta name, um, is one, robots is two, viewpoint is three. Um, and I want you to tell me whether they are actually necessary on a website or not necessary on a website. So um, I've actually color coded it red, um, amber, green. Um, and if you're able to do that in the chat, um, that'd be good. And if you can spot my uh, coding error, then uh, you get extra brownie points. All gone silent. Hold on, when you say necessary, do you mean for the website to work or like that's required for good SEO? What do you yeah, mean? sorry. Yeah, for good SEO. So are they to to get your website to rank, you include specific meta tags and titles and, and things like that. So it's just to get them to um to rank well. And are they necessary sort of thing? But some of them aren't. Is it just the type, whether it's necessary or not? So for example, like you've got the type uh, robots with yep. the with the description no index, which would obviously be devastating for SEO. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I'm after. So it's just red, green and uh, and, and amber. I can give you I give you a few minutes for that. How do we respond red, green, or amber? Sorry, I'm being thick. Oh, that's okay. So just in the chat, just put like, I don't know, number one, red, number two, green. Gotcha, gotcha, right. Yeah, so I thought there was like a <laughs> UI that I was missing with three buttons. <laughs> no. I wish you could do that on here. I think they're fine. Mm -hmm. So if I just, um, I'll give you the first one. Um, I know that there's a the, the, there's a coding error there because of the uh, uh, the meta end tag, which you don't actually need. Um, but um, it is necessary um, for Google um, to understand what your website is. It's just that. Cool. Nice. I'll just give you another few, a minute or two, and then uh, we'll go for the answers. The rest of more red saver. <laughs> is, is <it> not <laughs> a subtle trick. <laughs> No. When do we start fighting? Fighting over uh, this is this is quite sub seems quite subjective. Yeah, I suppose is it put down to personal opinion as well? It's whatever Stephen says it is, though. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. it's his chat. <laughs> <laughs> we need to give him temporary control so he can like mute <laughs> anyone that speaks out against him. <laughs> Beloved leader style. <laughs> Go on then, the suspense is too great. The suspense is too great. So obviously you've all got this one right. So uh, uh, the robots, um, you definitely don't want the no index tag at the top of the, um, of the uh, in the head, sorry. Uh, but there is a reason why you would need that there. Um, and that is for development. Um, so any development server or website that you have, I don't know, it might be a subdomain of staging dot something um you definitely want the no index there um but 
um, so that it doesn't appear on Google while you're developing. Um, the second one is a green um, because this, um, again, there's a slight typo, um, but this one controls the width um, of the uh, web browser. So it will tell the website um, your device width and then make the website responsive. Um, the second one, uh, Twitter cards. Um, again, I think Michael pointed out it, it should be content summary um, rather than value. But um, this is a, do you need this on the website? Um, yes, if it's like a news-based website where people are sharing your content on social media and stuff because these tags are specifically for social media. Um, the second one, uh, sorry, the second to last one is author tag. Again, this is not necessary. So it, it's a, do you need it? Do I not need it? Um, however, I did find out a couple of days ago that um, Facebook now are displaying the author of like articles and stuff through um, using this tag. So if you've got a website that's got blogs and um, news articles, then it's definitely worth adding in. Um, and then the last one, revisit after. And then it's seven days. You don't need this one at all. Um, Google will come back when, when it comes back. Basically, um, this used to be a really old-fashioned way of of um, getting the the bots to to come back to your website. Um, but with it, um, technology these days, the, they're always coming back um, periodically. So, yeah, it's just a bit of fun. <laughs> so. Um, any questions about that, by the way? So, like, if you had a blog that you published two weekly, it wouldn't be worth putting the revisit up, revisit after seven days on the on the blog index, but not on an individual post. No, I I wouldn't put it on there. It will just cause bloat to the page. The so Google um, has like crawl budgets and things like that. That then they'll come back to the website periodically. Um, I don't know how often. You look at server logs and access logs and stuff like that, but you can work out roughly how often Google comes back um, by analyzing your log files on the server. The revisit after is meant to be don't revisit until seven days have passed. So if you do it daily, that's actually quite bad. Yeah. And also what you said about if you've got if you've got a staging server and uh -huh. you put in robots no index yep. don't trust don't trust google or bing or any of the other ones you know block it on h access or some other way of doing it because you know someone's going to get it or some nasty search engine's going to get it that nasty search engine will get indexed yep. by google and then you know there's those domain things they'll go on your domain staging.example.com is and it's got the and it and it will put loads of content just so they get the hit so just block it just to whoever you want however i, I generally when i'm developing i generally do both um and i'll come on to that actually um later on in the presentation so um but yeah so that that just basically means that um yeah like you say no index don't index the site um but you are you're allowing bots to crawl your site okay so um images um so again images um we're going to come on to a bit more but um i just wanted to point out that whenever you you have a, um, an image tag on the website rather than um, having a class that a css class that would control the width and height of a of an image it's always best to put um, a specific value um, on that image so width equals 200 height equals 200 um, and also make sure that the, the image is the same size as what you're listing that image as. Does that make sense? So like um, if this image, image.jpg, it should be 200 by 200 pixels. It shouldn't be 2000 by 2000 and then resize down. Um, the other thing is, is about the alt text. Um, so it's always important to have an alt text um, the alt tag at the end uh, where it says a, a, an awesome image um, because if for whatever reason you're moving images around on a server or you've uploaded a page and the images are broken um, your user experience won't be great 
and also um, search engine bots don't see images they can't visualize what your your website looks like um, so it's quite good to then stick in a few sort of um, describe the image in your alt text so it'd be like I don't know my image is of a dog so it's a dog at the beach um, yeah uh, Stephen, a couple of us put a thing in the chat asking oh, why it's better to um, why is it better to specify the height and width explicitly in the tag rather than in CSS? Yeah, so um, with um, CSS and stuff like that, uh, you you shouldn't have them as render blocking. Um, so, for instance, in your head tag, um, you might have a style um, dot CSS. Well, what happens is, is that when you're processing the web page on on um, through like your Google Chrome and stuff like that, the website will load and then it will load the image and then it will have to resize that image afterwards. Uh, it just slows down the whole website speed. Um, so it's always best practice really within um, SEO and stuff to declare width and heights on your images. Does that make sense? You c how can you do that responsively though? Cause if it's if you've got an image, most time they're going to be different sizes on like mobile, set, tablet, desktop. Yeah, but you wouldn't set a width and height on that, would you? So um, there's a thing that you can use called source sets. Um, I didn't I didn't include that in here, um, but what you can do within within an image tag is is have source sets. So basically, you can specify that if the browser window is at 720 pixels then the, the image to show is this one um, and then the width and height is this um, but that's I think within HTML5 if but I, you wouldn't you wouldn't back. have the inline attributes though would you for width and height then you tell um, them as... well actually at that point they'd probably be like percentages or something no no they, they, I think I think they it, they would go away but it would be part of the source set the data so the reflow wouldn't happen because it's specified within the source set, or, or maybe you. you, you... Um, I just quickly got some code that I'll just dump in the chat. One second. Uh, so um, I don't know how it how it renders, but yeah, as you see here, um, you've got the source set um, of the images. So you have all your images listed, and then you have your sizes. I probably should have included that as an example. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well. Does that make sense? So is this to uh, to do with the page speed for SEO? Because it avoids the reflow, you get a lot faster uh, page rendering, which boosts your score. Is that? Yeah. yeah, that's it. So essentially what will happen is that bots and Google and your users can see the website quicker. Um, so then your bounce rate goes down. Uh, which in turn then Google likes your website more because it, you, you, your websites are being interacted with um, and then um, the more that they get interacted with some SEOs say that it increases your website rankings and things like that that makes sense does that make sense cool my screen's gone all yep. dark one sec oh there you go okay cool so um, so that moves us on to site speed um, so here is the latest data from um, uh, Data Reportal. Um, they, they produce loads of digital um, information basically from across the world. And this one's from the United Kingdom. I just wanted to point out that basically 94% of the population have got a mobile phone of any type. 91% of them are using smartphones. Um, it's quite interesting to see that uh, VR and stuff is, is, is coming in there. Um, but this just proves how important it is that one, your website is responsive, and two, that the website is fast. Um, not only for SEO purposes, but again, for user experience. So, roughly, how long do you think the average web page, mobile web page, takes to load? Um, so, when you're browsing on a sort of a 3G network um, outside and you want to find out. Um, Yeah. Three seconds. Three seconds. Any yeah. advances? Five seconds. Any advances? 
I mean, it could be 10 or 11. Like, when I turn web pages down to 3G in the Chrome yep. tools, quite often they suffer. <laughs> okay. Are we talking about full load? Like, everything's yep. finished? Yeah, everything's <laughs> rendered, finished. Oh, God. In that case, I changed mine. My not, <laughs> I, I up mine to like 20 seconds. Okay. Seven seconds. Uh, isn't it considered after three seconds you can go away? Yeah, okay. So Mike's gone with 20 seconds. Here's the highest at the moment. Any advances? Well, it kind of depends. Like, if, if you've got stuff that only loads when you scroll to it, then... The, the average full page speed, uh, full page load, so I don't know. You're, you're, you're looking for a takeaway menu or something like that on the website. Okay, so the average mobile web page takes about 15 seconds to load. Oh, sorry, that's on a 4G connection. So that's faster. So a 3G connection would even be even slower. Um, so I think Michael, uh, Mike was closest to that. Yeah, I'm definitely taking that as a win. <laughs> Um, so that just proves that obviously, whatever content you have on your web page, someone's got to sit there and wait 15 seconds to load. Um, as it might not seem a long time, but actually, essentially, when you want someone, if someone wants information fast, um, then yeah, it will it will seem like forever. And uh, there's your little gift to say that. It's, uh, <laughs> Okay, so then the average bounce rate on a mobile phone um, from a Google search is about 52%. Um, and this is from a survey that was completed uh, well, this month so far. Um, that they've got 52% of people are bouncing off a mobile uh, website. And that's all down to site speed. So the slower the site, the more high your bounce rate is. And then Google won't like your website. Um, so that's, um, I've got some tips here to try and get your website lightning far. Um, so compress and minify the code. Um, so when you're coding, you'll have huge JavaScript files. You'll have huge CSS files. Um, it's just a process of um, compressing that through compressors um, and, um, and and loading them on your, on your site. Uh, I think Lewis has put um, static HTML and AMP. Yeah, definitely. That will um, definitely help um, with. It's not to use uh, AMP, it's to follow their lead. I actually really dislike AMP. It's the only thing they've done is reduce the amount of crap on the page. Uh -huh. So if you, if you do that from the get go, yep. you, you don't even need it because you're already accelerated. Most definitely. Uh, and obviously, AMP pages, um, again, that's probably another talk that, that could be had um, an, another day. But um, with AMP, Google like AMP pages. I think they built it um, for a faster internet. Um, and what you'll find on Google search is that news articles and stuff will have like a little icon that says lightning. Um, and that shows that they're an AMP page. Um, yeah, there's a lot of discussion around AMP. Um, within sorry, SEO. I don't understand. Oh, sorry, that was my Google going off. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> Google is <ripping> in. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, the next tip would be to remove render blocking JS from the, the head of the code, um, head of the website, so the header tags, um, and placing it in the footer just before the body tag. Um, again, think about your page load. That That has to be... Uh, the JavaScript has to be rendered first before the content is shown. Um, so anything is that's in the head of the, the website will, um, yeah, will have to be rendered first. So um, as I just said, move it into the footer. Uh, use a content delivery network. So um, Cloudflare and things that use free um, content delivery networks. Again, that helps distribute your, your website onto multiple servers through their, their service. Um, in turn, quicker uh, resources come into the page, quicker um, the website is. Um, so leverage your browser caching um, by setting your expired headers um, in your server um, configuration or your HT access files. Um, if you're using WordPress, there's some cool um, plugins um, that will do that for you. Um, 
off the top of my head i can't remember but um yeah they i think i things pops to mind and things like that so um but definitely definitely if you can um use your browser cache more than um your server cache and then you sorry well just a quick question um if you've got your conf your web server configured to to gzip stuff it's sending you yep does, does that is that considered better by google or is that just kind of yeah so that that's um the compressing and minifying of all your code um so you're you're zipping it up um and then yeah sending it to the browser which is fun um yeah you, uh, lewis is putting yoast seo so yoast seo is, is a good plugin for your metadata and things like that um i've got some auto optimize and um there's um some others that i can dig out for you um if you definitely use wordpress um i don't think mouse has stopped um so websites can get bloated with lots of unused code so for instance like um maybe your index file your index or html file might have some commenting code um don't have commenting code on the, on your web page um as much as what the browser uh, like the user can't see it google can still read that code um and it takes them so long to to, to parse that code and index relevant stuff um definitely think about what elements you have on the site so um in particular like um css frameworks and things as as much as they're good like bootstrap um but you can end up bloating out your html tag with so many different classes because you want it to do so many different things and place in a certain way um it is it's advisable really just to try and stay away from that um i know some of the developers in here will probably shoot me for that <laughs> um but in terms of page speed and also when you're um looking at your um site speed don't just focus on the home page um think about where your customers will go so uh, my example here product pages um sometimes product pages are really heavy um for um images information downloads attachments um baskets javascript that sort of thing so um the more that um, you you check every page on your site um, for the speed um, the better experience will be and then be mindful about third-party scripts that you have running on your website um, again I spoke about bootstrap but they have their own JS um, jQuery um, quite a lot of websites will have jQuery in the header of the of the website it's render blocking um, so um, if you can move it to the footer um, sometimes it is dependent, uh, like your website might be dependent on on the third party script. But um, if you can get to into the footer and your website still works on the initial page load, th then do that. Um, some handy tools to test your website speed, um, and um, my opinion is that you should do it at least once a month. Um, I know if you if you if you have um, a lot of client websites, it, it's probably quite a task to test your all your websites um, but definitely um, when you're developing or it's on a staging server that will then go live definitely make sure about um, checking the speed um, so one of the tools here is lighthouse um, it's actually built into um, Chrome um, lighthouse um, if you go into the dev tools and um, you click under audits and then you can choose different throttling um, so you can have a, a mobile device or desktop and what speed connection and then you can see how fast or slow your website is um, page speed insights is again is another one that's developed by google um, gt metrics um, is one that we use quite i use quite common um, it produ like produces like a waterfall it also gives you some handy tips about how to um, what's it called optimize your website further and the last one I use is web page test. Um, so web page test is to, um, what's it called? Uh, it checks, it gives you a waterfall um, and it checks like the first uh, time to first buy, et cetera, et cetera, um, for your website document fully loaded and things like that. Um, Lewis has just put Pingdom. Yeah, again, that's a really good tool um, to, to use 
Um, there are so many out there, but these are just uh, some select few that I picked because um, I use them daily. Um, you've seen my website before, but this is my website, my homepage. Um, there's nothing to it really, and it's made in like Vue.js, so um, you can see that uh, my score is 97%. Um, I've never got a website to 100, but I know you can can get it to 100. Um, so, any questions about that? I had a question about um, using fig uh, captions and figures um, in instead of alt tags. So um, okay. there's no HTML attribute you can add that specifically says to screen readers this is not supposed to have alt text. And I've seen that some people are using that inside a figure, and then they're using uh, I think fig caption inside that with the image so that they can provide like tabular data in because alt tags are quite limited in what they can display so you might have like a, a chart which is yeah. like image or interactive and then you've got the actual table in the fig caption and it might hide it for people that can see the uh, chart like that's all down to the site but i was wondering if that um if that would be negative for seo because of the lacking alt tag um, got repetition I, I'd have to look that up actually I've not really used figures and captions and stuff like that to be honest there's not many websites that I have that would uh, to use that so uh, let me look that up and I'll come back to you I don't think it'll be a negative thing because you're providing some information to an image or, or, or some, a, a form of data um, I don't know if any of the other SEOs in here other thing um, any comments about that I didn't care I don't know I caught all that question but I think fig fig caption is something that you use if it's being presented on the page as a as an actual so it should be visible the alt tag is something that is not visible so you're describing that image to someone that can't see it so someone using a screen reader uh, yeah, and that's the text underneath, isn't it? With the um, and it's normally nine times out of ten in italics, isn't it? And quite small. It's yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's yeah, it's sort of visible, but it's, um, a, it's a CSS element. So, like, if you chose to leave it as a default styling, that would be it. But so, for example, <clears throat> I had uh, someone that's like an accessibility expert, a large agency, have a look at something I was doing, and they said instead of using title and alt tags, they said just delete that and put if, if you have to put spans into the page with the actual content with a special class that hides them for people that need a compressed sort of um, what was it that low density of data because what what you're doing is you're making it easier for a screen reader to go through it and they suggested that that could have SEO benefits as well because it has the benefit for people who not everyone not everyone can't see or is using a screen reader. Like mm -hmm. some people might access your site for a browser that's old or whatever, and it will allow it to show for them as well. Because some of the newer formats, like WebP, for example, just won't work on certain uh, older browsers, and certain yeah. people are stuck on those for reasons outside of their control. I, I was right, wondering, right. I mean, I think it's great that you'll look into it. Um, I didn't want to derail the thing. I just yeah no I, I've I never actually had to use them so yeah I can have a look um, at the benefits of SEO for you that's not a problem okay so um, the next thing is image optimization um, so the most common culprit for a slow website is of course images um, and why is that because they're they're normally large in size um, if you um, like photographs from a, a uh, a wedding for instance they might be 15 20 megabytes and people think oh yeah i'm going to place that on my blog because i really like it um and if, if you're using the website on a mobile phone that's got to download 20 megabytes worth of data as well as the rest of the web page so um not only is it like uh, eco-friendly by having image optimization by reducing the size of images and things like that um it's um more happy for a happy user. Um, so uh, just some tips, I've just touched on it. Compress your images. So um, there's websites out there like tinypng.com, 
um, that will compress your images. Um, I find if you if you're using that sort of thing um, that you have to do it two or three times to get it down so many so much in size. Um, but actually, if you've got like Adobe, uh, Photoshop, and stuff like that, and you're creating images for a website, um, if you export them at like 60% quality or 80% quality, the file size will come down. Also, export them as the actual width and height that you need. Um, if you've got a banner image at the top of a website, you want to specifically crop for that banner rather than having the full image and then using like background CSS to, to manipulate that within the within the frame that you have. Um, so remove any unnecessary image metadata. So I don't know um, if you guys, obviously Jason does photography, but within a photo you, you, you get like, uh, this was taken on a Canon and it's uh, this model and it was taken at that date and time. Um, when you compress and, and, and export images, um, from Photoshop, for instance, you can remove all that data. Um, so it's just literally the raw file that you have. Um, explore lazy loading. Um, I don't, probably most of you have heard of lazy loading. Um, basically, you load um, maybe a, a, a little GIF spinner, um, and then as, as um, you scroll down the page, then the image pops in. Um, that will help with the page speed because the website will be loaded. Um, but then as the user goes down the page, then you can get the images loaded in. Um, leverage source set for data, uh, different score, screen sizes. And I think, Michael, that's that's what I was talking about earlier um, with the, the image um, tags. And again, I'm repeating myself here, but ensure that your images have alt text. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? It's probably quite quick. Um, but the less images on a page, the better, but then you want to make it visually interactive and things like that. Um, so just be mindful about the, yeah, the, the size of your images um, and how they're presented on the website. Um, Lewis touched on WebP. Um, again, I should have probably put a point in there that basically if you can use the latest technology um, within four images like SVGs for icons, um, rather than PNGs with no background, um, and WebP for, for actual images, um, then do so. But always make sure that you have a fallback option um, if the uh, WebP image doesn't work. No questions? Was there question? just, just, I've got a question on compress your images. So yep. if, if, if I take a photo and it's, say, five megabytes and i put it down to 50 kilobytes it looks quite yep. good i feel happy if i put it down to 20 kilobytes i feel even happier but to me it seems to look pretty much the same so where is that actual you know where where's a sweet spot how can you tell the difference and you know does it care does it matter that much it's more of an image question to everyone really than a seo but how yes. much how much you compress the smaller the image, the better. So if you can get an image that's five megabytes down to 20 kilobytes, you'll definitely do it. I think personally, it's, it's more of a, a client perspective because actually clients want really high, powerful images. So I think if you can get it down the smallest you possibly can um, to still look good, then the client's happy and you're happy because the website's fast and the, the images aren't taking up much disk space. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So I understand that, but my question was: at twenty k or fifty k, it looks the same to me, really. Andy, um, the the people that write PNG opt-in and JPEG opt-in, or zip whatever the PNG one is, yeah. JPEG opt-in, they employ something called a perception filter, yeah. which acts years of science into what colours people can see. But it really is going to come down to testing for each group and each user, and checking your stakeholders. Because even if you're right, if you've got like a creative director that used to be a photographer, he doesn't care about the technical reason why you're why you're destroying what he thinks are beautiful images just to help customers. You, you've got to kind of win that argument with them. So basically, just try whatever looks good. So yeah, I'm gonna give you you know they might start for eighty percent and I'll to put it to ninety five percent. I'm still like what well, still looks good, but really it's you know what 
what actually looks good and what people are looking at it, be it a big screen or a mobile, just let yeah. other people have a look. Cool. Excellent. Thanks. That's okay. Yeah, so compress is generally means like this the probably the file size as well. So yeah, the smaller but the better quality. Cool. Um, so a bit more code, um, schema.org or rich snippets. It depends on what you want to call it. Some people call them featured snippets. Um, there's so many different names out there. Um, but for this, we're going to call uh, them rich snippets. Um, does anyone know what they are before? Oh, quickly. <laughs> before I give away the answer. Oh, sorry. Jason's got a question. Are slow loader plugins worth having in WordPress? So uh, for WordPress, I wouldn't have um too many plugins because again the more plugins that you have um it bloats the website um but in terms of slow loader there's plugins out there like auto optimize um, which is one that i highly use um which um, will help with the process of your website there's plugins out there that do lazy loading as well so um if you don't have much coding experience you can can use them as well uh, does that answer your question Gonna type. If we're gonna type. Oh, cool. Okay, so um, rich snippets. So rich snippets allow um, webmasters to mark up um, different types of content in a way that um, search engines can understand. So um, here is an example of some JSON LD um, that basically um, says that this is my website. Um, this is my URL. This is my logo. Um, and this generally sits at the top of the top of the website um, in the header tags. Um, there's my Facebook, my Instagram, um, etc. Um, there's so many different types of um, featured snippets, and they're all um, part of the search engine result pages. So the rich snippets that you put in HTML, they render somehow on um, search engines. I probably said that a bit backwards. So there are over 40 different types of um, featured snippets that you can get um, on Google um, or Bing or Yahoo and stuff like that. Um, but one tip I've put here at the bottom is avoid bloating the web page. Um, so, for instance, if you're including product data on your home page with no products, then sort of find a way to hide it um, and only include it on your um, product pages. Um, yeah, so there are over 40 different types, and I think the next slide will show you um, what these are. So um, these are just some of them. You've probably all seen them um, on Google, on in particular. Um, but here you've got like um, recipes and, and um, descriptions. You've got top stories, so the, the story banner. You've got social media on there. Um, they even put videos. Now, um, there's been a lot of stipulation around sort of what um, Google's intentions are. And I know I talk about a lot about Google, but um, as we go on, they, they own most of the, the um, search engine traffic. Um, but there's been a lot of uh, talk about them only wanting you to be on Google. So essentially what will happen they're talking about is that um, your website will fuel Google to then render your information on Google. And then what everyone will do is just channel into Google and use Google. Does that make sense? Um, so that's why they're starting to put these different things on there, like questions and your business information and um, your, your products and stuff like that are rendering on Google more. You've probably seen it um, as, as time goes on. You type the question into Google, you've instantly got the answer rather than navigating to a web page. Um, I thought I had more than that. No. Okay. I thought I had more information on that. Sorry, because um, that was going to be the bulk of the talk, really. Um, so um, one of the things was um, definitely look at um, schema.org. Um, it's a website. Um, the website's quite text-based and stuff. Um, and actually look at how JSONLD and stuff is rendering on the website. Um, again, avoid page bloat, avoid bloat of yeah, your website. Um, I honestly thought I'd put more information in there. I do apologize. 
Um, maybe we can do a separate talk about um, the scheme of the world because it is a whole um, uh, can of worms, really. Um, but, but it's just an overview, I suppose. Yeah, as Lewis puts it, schema the org is duplicate machine readable data. Yeah, it's just, that's exactly what it is. Um, and you're fueling their engines, I suppose. Yeah, I've used schema.org and JSON LB and APIs, but I hadn't really considered it you know, important for SEO and stuff. Yeah, um, I definitely use it for SEO purposes, um, especially if you've got like a website with products. Um, because actually when you type into Google and you want a, 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 I don't know, a male teacher, um, at the top of Google, you've instantly got a, a strip of shopping, haven't you? Like the, and then you click into the, a product that you like to look off and send it off. So um, for SEO purposes, I, I highly recommend it. Um, all your reviews data and stuff like that is it can be done by Google. Um, schema.org. Um, I don't know how many clients you have that have got job websites again. Um, definitely marking up the job ads on your website with um, Schema Talk is, is definitely worth it, beneficial. You have to get them to put in the rate now and the location. So I have a client that in 2014 we built a website for him. We put on schema.org yeah. and it was fine for years. But end of 2019, early 2020, I started getting alerts because they refuse to put how much they pay because it's probably not great and they can't put a location because it's a mobile job it's fixing water pipes throughout essex so they have to travel so there's no yeah. location and google actually penalizes um job job listings for that but i think they do still display them they just complain heavily and send you emails like weekly yeah so with that you can actually put the, the jobs like uk wide um uh, from that that type of example um there's tools out there like um they have the specific structured data it's called again another another way of saying the same thing within sto but um a, a checker um online that you can um they parse your data and, and show you what it will look like just to make sure it is it has all the valid points uh, because there's like necessary um I can't remember what they're called, like attribute things. Yeah, um, I was just saying that it basically changes over time, though. So essentially, yeah. Yeah. the specification says one thing, but the, the schema.org specification doesn't necessarily tie to what the Google Webmaster tools will tell you you have to have or will write to you about not having. It, yeah. And they it can impact how you get, uh, like whether you get visibility and stuff. So I know that that one's affected um, that particular business in like, their recruiting efforts. Yeah, I have to say that Google are quite clever at that. They'll release a big, massive algorithm update, and then all of a sudden you'll get, the, I think their search console errors and stuff like that come through, and you and you start panicking that your website's broken and stuff like that. They quite, they are quite clever like that. Um, yeah, um, um, I just mentioned there about Google Search Console. Um, it's basically um, a tool that's given by Google for web developers to, to showcase what um, your website is doing on Google. So um, from that, you'll be able to get information about the rankings of the website. Um, you'll be able to get like specific queries, like keyword data and stuff like that, which is, again, another, um, another talk. But um, you'll also get errors, so like crawling errors. So if they can't call a page for a reason, or they can't um, render your structured data and stuff. Yeah, it's definitely a tool worth worth connecting your website to. Um, okay, so uh, just moving on to URLs now. Um, so um, tips for the perfect URL. So as developers, we'll quite often like have a really random string in a URL just to get a page going. But actually, for an SEO point of view, it's it's better to build um a, a structure within your website so that you have categories subcategories products and stuff like that so it, it follows a, like a tree um when you're thinking about building a website always think about how you're going to piece together the website in a, in a readable structure uh, and again so that it's future proof um so that if they want to add a new category or they want to add a, 
a new page, the URL structure is always the same. Um, URLs must be human readable um, so that they make sense. Um, quite often or not, you'll see up in the picture that you've got query strings at the end of it. Um, now, most of the um, like the newest, um, what's it called? Um, frameworks like JavaScript frameworks and stuff like that, they can sometimes be annoying and append different hashtags and uh, different queries and stuff like that. So if you're processing data and things, try and avoid them uh, uh, as much as you can um, and, and use your database and things. Um, what about SPAs? Now, um, STO for SPAs, again, is it, um, it's probably another tool. I keep saying that, but um, with SEO and stuff, it, it's a big, big, big um, umbrella, really. Um, in terms of SPAs, personally, I've never done anything with SPAs. Um, it's a new technology that I'd love to get into. Um, so I, I probably can't comment at the moment. Um, but again, I'm, I'm willing to research and do probably another talk and, and stuff like that. Um, I didn't just volunteer, but <laughs> I did. Um, so I'm sorry I can't I can't help you there. Um, Lewis has put microformats don't duplicate the data. Google seems to be able to read them despite not advertising it. Uh, and it lowers the float and is open to W3C compliance. Okay, cool. So uh, microformats is a, is a, um, a different type. Of, well, it's the same thing of um, JSON LD, but rather than at the top of the page, you actually add the attributes within, say, div tags and stuff like that and, and spans. Cool. I think, um, Lewis, um, Michael um, has got a question about um, SPAs, if you're able to help him. <laughs> of course, I'd help you with a talk. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, you can do. Yeah, I, I've never done SEO for SPA. It's, it's probably um, quite difficult, I suppose, if it's a single page application. Um, you're not sort of navigating and things like that. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, the last part of the talk, and I hope I've still got most people still here listening, um, is about mobile devices um, and um, making your, your website responsive. Um, again, it may be something you don't think is related to SEO, but it actually it, it is. Um, with most users um, using mobile phones nowadays, it's probably quite important. Um, so mobile first indexing was first introduced in the 1st of July, 2019. Um, and um, it's been, they've been rolling it out for ages. It feels like for ages. So um, well, it's coming up for a year now. Um, so now Google will call your website in a mobile point of view. So um, when we first built, started building um, websites, mobile websites, sometimes you'll have like an M dot domain. So M dot example dot com, um, where you'd have essentially two versions of the website. Um, and when, this mobile first indexing started to come in, people were noticing that information they wanted to show on the mo like um, on Google wasn't there because of the, the M dot subdomain and things like that. Um, so if you have content on a desktop, but not on a mobile device, Google won't find it now because of this mobile first indexing. Um, ensure that your uh, website works um, on on a mobile device and how you want it to look on a mobile device. Um, and this is when um, you start talking about responsive design um, rather than having two separate domains um, and, and things like that. So, um, An accessibility point here, so when you're building buttons and things and, and touch areas in particular, like um, mobile hamburger menus and stuff, Ensure that all touch points have like a padding area of 48 pixels. Um, so as much as you might only want the, the, the icon to display at 20 pixels, that whole touch point should be 48 pixels by 48 pixels. Um, it's an accessibility point. Um, and as I mentioned, it's not recommended anymore to, to have two versions of your website. Um, if you need to have this for whatever reason, 
ensure that both sites are in Google Search Console and both are indexable um, uh, by Google or being Yahoo. Uh, so, go back to the uh, meta viewport. So, we've already briefly noticed this, but um, the viewport is the visible area to your user. So, ensure that if your mobile, if your website is mobile responsive by responsive design, that you have this um, in the in the header. Um, quite often, you might navigate to a website that should be um, mobile responsive, but because they haven't got that uh, meta tag in in the, in the top. Um, it won't show properly. Um, and then I've got uh, just one final tip for me. Um, ensure that your development staging server is not indexed by Google. Um, I think we briefly spoke about this, but um, you can either set password protect on the site, um, have IP whitelisting, um, add the meta robot no index across the site, um, and then um, add no index into the robots.txt. Um, avoid adding disallow all in the robots.txt. Um, and um, there were some things about sort of Google not recognizing this anymore. But um, if you've got all of them in your staging server, then um, I'm pretty certain that um, any search engine won't find it. Um, cool. Um, so. Uh, I know that I've spoken a lot about Google, um, and if you go to any uh, SEO talk, generally speaking, they're going to be talking about Google. Um, this is the latest data um, about search engines. Um, you've got your Google at near enough 92%, and then the rest follow, um, being Yahoo. Cool. We've got DuckDuckGo there for Lee. Um, he's probably one the only user of dot dot go. Um, I've got a question that says, "How do you use pipeline into PHP applications?" Um, I'm sorry, Bernard, that's probably a bit over my head. <laughs> um, this might be something for some of the Laravel guys here. Um, what did you actually mean by pipeline, Bernard? Maybe you're flying chat. Because there's several different things called a pipeline. Yeah. Cool. Um, this slide, obviously, the slides you'll get all the slides and stuff. I'm going to add some more information in about schema.org um, and, and look at the captions and stuff for, for Lewis. Um, and then you've got these resources that I've just added in at the end. Um, And there we go. I'm finished. And a little gift to the guys that went to <laughs> So uh, I hope I've still got, oh, I've actually gained a person. So that, that's probably quite positive. <laughs> um, but thanks for watching, guys. I hope I didn't bore you um, and some of it was useful.